Hey, Kim. Yeah. That's quite the fire you got there. Yeah, that got a little intense. <laughs> I think it took my Ooh. leg hairs off. Is that cool or what? getting ready for uh, another camping trip and we found out that our trailer brake cable is absolutely fried it ripped and is frayed uh, so ordered this one on Amazon very inexpensive but you can see this thing is gonna last forever so our recommendation to you is if you have this style on your trailer now just replace it now just get it over with it's super easy just gonna cut the cable, add this one on there. It's got this nice little clip on the end so you can clip it to the vehicle. I mean, it we works, not only did but... It, did it fray here where it's supposed to hook? I mean, the actual wire. Yeah, it was due for I mean, it's, a new one. Yeah. Anyway, it, this, you know, we've had this trailer close to five years, so now this thing, as you can see, I mean, it's probably gonna last us at least that long, if not longer. So for a few bucks, highly recommend it. We'll leave a link down below if you're interested in it. Of owning a trailer, pull up on the side of the road, viewpoint like this of Mount Washington, not a bad place to stop and have a sandwich. All right, so we are in spot C58 here at Tumalo State Park. Uh, the site is completely level, didn't have to use any, any adjustment at all. The sites have full hookups, which is awesome because we don't usually get that in Oregon State Parks. And here's our view behind us. Um, hopefully, no earthquakes because that would suck. Um, <laughs> There is a lot of wildlife here, um, lots of little chipmunks and stuff, so don't leave any food out. Um, there's also rattlesnakes, so not recommended to go climb up in the, the rocks. Um, there's also lizards. We actually, as soon as we got here, we had a lizard and a chipmunk on the rock right behind us. Did she say there were snakes? <laughs> I don't like snakes. Just rattlesnakes. I don't like snakes. I don't like snakes on planes, trains, bushes. <laughs> So we have been trying to get into the state park for, well, we've had the trailer for five years and we've been trying to get in here ever since. Um, one of the reasons is timing. You, It's a, a small state park. There's only 23 full hookup sites. Um, and we actually booked the site last October. So it took us six months. Um, we booked it as far out as we could to get the best weather, but we knew we had to mark it on the calendar to, to make sure that we got the spot that we wanted. This is a perfect spot. We've got really good privacy. Uh, but with regard to the state park, this is the ideal location for all things bad. So yeah, like she's saying, the um, sites are very, very level. I shouldn't be walking back here because of snakes. But the only problem is, is that all your hookups are way up here. So the sewer and the hose and all that, luckily we have enough length to get there with power and everything, but having a short trailer like we do, we have to park back here. And as you can see, we have to run two things of sewer all the way down and our electrical cord is long enough. But anyway, yeah, really level sites, nice concrete. Overall though, beautiful, beautiful spot. You got these awesome, I mean, we're in the desert, right? The desert part of Oregon, central Oregon. So they got, um, these trees and smells so good out here, doesn't it? That's one thing we can't, unfortunately, show you over a camera, but it just has got that, what is it, like uh, juniper or ponderosa, ponderosa pines or something? Gosh, like you come out here and it smells so different than anywhere else in Oregon. There are 23 full hookup sites with sewer, electricity, and water, 54 tent campsites, seven yurts, two of them are pet friendly. There's two seasonal group camping areas and two seasonal group picnic areas. Seasonal hiker biker camp, flush toilets, firewood and ice sales, and bike helmets for sale. That's a first item. For sale? Yep, bike huh? helmets for sale. Haven't seen that before in the state park. So you can get a firewood for five dollars a bundle. You can get bike helmets for eight dollars. Wow. wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, you might just come here and buy your buy helmet because it. it's gonna be cheaper than <laughs> buying it there. But here's a map. 
So just huge river running right here, right across the street, which is awesome. You got a day use area, got all your different parking. Where are we at? We are in 58 right here. So we're in 58, which is right across from the restrooms and the shower. So that's kind of cool. Um, and then you can see we have kind of a, a decent gap here between our neighbor. So quite a bit of privacy on that side, which is pretty awesome. Um, so it's a good spot. See, there's some trailheads here. See, look, there's so much room for activities. We have this whole space here where we can set up our clam and then our neighbor is way over here. And then you got these hedges. So a lot of privacy and then absolutely beautiful backdrop, which is really cool if you park over here. We're right now in the Tumalo State Park day use area and we are hiking along the Deschutes River Trail. Um, this trail is 12 miles long. There's a two and a half mile section here that's right off the campground. A mile heads north and then another mile and a half south that goes to the um, Riley Ranch Nature Preserve, which is a place that we want to go and uh, check out and see see the wildlife that's there. But this uh, this trail follows the Deschutes River all the way down into Bend and I think they're they're working to make it even longer than the 12 miles that it currently is. So it's an absolutely gorgeous trail. We've done multiple sections of it and you're never going to be disappointed. Pine cones are dropping. You gotta be careful in here. Look at this tree, this is awesome. Oh, looking up is kind of scary when you got pine cones trying to hit you. The Deschutes River Trail used to end right here. This was just the, the two and a half mile section for the Tumalo area. Ended because of this obsidian rock flow right here. Um, but thanks to money provided from Oregon State Park. So those of you that are in Oregon and you have to pay that dreaded $5 fee every time you go to park at a state park, um, your money does go somewhere and go somewhere useful. They were able to build this boardwalk bridge over the obsidian flow. So now the trail is able to continue on and connect with the, the main Deschutes River Trail. So pretty awesome. Keep donating. Enjoying a warm sunny day and having a pre-dinner drink at Avid. I love Avid ciders. This one is um, jalapeno watermelon which Jason oh. chose. I'm try, a little scared. Try that thing. Mm, I can smell it. I can taste it, but it's not like, it's not bad. Yeah, you were hoping for a big old. It oh was, dang it's it. It's not like that. <laughs> All right, so just left Avid. That is uh, Kim's favorite cider out of beautiful Bend, Oregon. So if you ever come to Bend, uh, got a couple videos on it, but this is got so many breweries and uh, cideries around here. Uh, but the re reason why I wanted to jump on is just to say um, we had a couple stop and say hi to us again, which was kind of cool. I think that's like the third time that's happened to us. So it's always kind of awkward. And we always tell ourselves that we can't fight or argue or <laughs> pick our nose or do anything in public because we just never know who's watching us. So anyway, yeah, if you ever see us out and about, Feel free, please stop by, say hi. Uh, we told ourselves, I wonder how many times people see us but don't say anything. We um, we won't buy yeah, it. We're, we're, <laughs> we're good people. We're nice people. Yeah, we're nice people. Introduce yourself. These folks were uh, from Gresham, which is very close to where we live, so that was kind of cool. Seemed like a really nice couple. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, definitely don't be afraid to say hi to us. Uh, we're not those kind of people that are going to uh, shoo you away. So anyway, off to uh, Worthy Brewing now. What are you drinking? It's called a muffin top. Wait, what? A muffin top. Wait, what? <laughs> the Newberry National Volcanic Monument. Um, we're actually at the Visitor Center, which the Visitor Center and the cave, there's an awesome cave here. They're closed for the season, um, but they they have trails all around this place that are open year round. So you can always come in during daylight hours and hike the trails. The last eruption was over 1300 years ago, um, but they say it's active and it will absolutely happen again. So who knows when, but- um, Hopefully not today. Yeah.
Snowballs of lava. Believe it or not, these giant boulders in front of you started as just small chunks of molten rock. As these pieces broke off the sides of the molten river channel, they rolled and tumbled through the flow, growing in size as they moved, much like a snowball rolling downhill and growing larger as more snow sticks to it. As you continue up the trail, you're following the path these lava balls took thousands of years ago. Kim was saying that this was, this is the um, volcano here. He said that was a thousand feet higher when it exploded. Yeah, so sometimes when you go on an adventure, like we like to do, uh, we came to a road closed sign and we just traveled in 10 miles and now we have to turn around. Ooh. Just kidding, there's a junction. Uh, but yeah, so when we started the trip, it said that um, you weren't be able to get through all the way to Mount Bachelor. So we're taking the Cascade Lakes Scenic, Scenic Route, Byway. right? Scenic Byway, absolutely beautiful byway. We've done it multiple times. So cool because you come back here and just nobody ever drives back here and it's absolutely beautiful. It just takes longer than taking the main highway. So most of the locals don't come this way. Uh, but anyway, so luckily there is a junction so we didn't completely waste our time. If you come in the winter time, just know that um, they have pretty harsh winters here. So now a lot of roads are closed off even to four wheel drives. They just shut them down. They don't want people back there um, getting stuck. So. That was Salt Creek Falls, pretty awesome. Uh, unfortunately, as you see, it is in, we're in May and the snow is still so covered uh, that you could not hike down. They have a platform below it so that you can actually see from the bottom. We, we were only able to see it from the top, which is too bad. If we could have saw it from below, that would have been awesome, uh, especially where the platform is. Made for a great photo. So we highly recommend you come check it out. But if you do, maybe wait until at least summer or fall. Unfortunately, summertime, as you can imagine, it's gonna be really busy, not as much water flow. Um, so we're gonna try to do it again, maybe in the fall. All right, unfortunately we're backtracking. I lost the case to my phone, I think, as we were walking down this trail. The unfortunate part is we don't know where. Luckily it's black and all the snow is white, but we're really hoping I'll be able to find that because it's an expensive case. Pretty sure you're not getting wheelchair access this time of year. It's no luck. It's gone. Probably down the waterfall. Uh, yeah, backtracked, couldn't find it. working on I'm trying to put the modem and the router together because the internet service here is not as good as we thought it was gonna be um what is the internet service here one bar <laughs> what does one bar do when you want to look up stuff on the internet and or watch anything or do anything uh, not much. no nothing not not much it gives you nothing anyway so now this is the fun she has to take her card out of her phone Little teeny guy. Yeah. Put it in this little case. Yeah. So this should get us upwards of two or three bars, we're hoping. Um, so this is a nice solution, but maybe there's an easier solution. We also have an antenna. <laughs> I have this solution. Oh, yeah. Nakasi Brewing Trailhead Tropical IPA. Uh, Nakasi, not a bend beer. I thought I got bend. Uh, weird. Whatever. <laughs> How'd you read that whole thing? That's like 50 digits. No, for real. How'd you do that so fast? That's the password right there. Yeah, but how did you do it so quick? It's words and numbers. Oh, yeah, it is. Okay. I don't like that that only has one bar. Yeah, I don't like that it only has one bar either. We're usually two to three is what, like... This is not an ideal scenario, folks. Let's just say that. Anyway, so at this point, it looks like we've got um, some power. We're able to get on... Uh, Google and do some searching so that's good and then I was able to jump on my phone onto my uh, television app and uh, look like everything was coming in clean 
So, cross our fingers that um, we'll be totally fine. Check this out. Home to rattlesnakes and other potentially dangerous animals. Yay, let's go hike this. Sounds like fun. How many layers do you have on? I have my golf shirt. I have a long sleeve, half zip. I have my golf <laughs> jacket. And I have a flannel. A fleece line flannel. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's cold, but it ain't. We're not in the friggin' Antarctic. Yeah, I tell you what, you'd be hard pressed to find a more beautiful half mile hike. We're not even to the waterfall yet, but you just walk right along the water. And they got these giant rock formations up here. Just a really cool spot. It's just a half mile just to get here. Easy, easy hike. But what an awesome view. It's time for proctology. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. Our toilet lid fell off. So we've been so, this lance has been so good other than the floor issue, which you guys may know about, but now the lid to our toilet came off and then the pin that holds the toilet is now sitting in the water. <laughs> so I get to go dive in. But luckily there's nothing in the toilet. <laughs> that would have been rough. But anyway, this is the life of uh, RV living, I guess, is you got to do the repairs yourself. All right, so that was a simple enough fix. Just had to uh, get the pins back inserted. I think what happened was um, just over time, the rattle of driving this thing down the road. It's like an earthquake, right? So things like that just shake out. And uh, luckily, I was able to get them placed back in pretty easily. Uh, so now we have a toilet lid again. So that's awesome. A few weeks ago, we bought the Zule uh, fruit press off of Amazon, and we absolutely love it. Uh, it's great for making margaritas, so no longer have to go and buy the margarita mix from the store. Everything's fresh fruit. Yeah, pretty awesome. All right, so Kim is making us a little margarita for dinner. So I got the ribeye duty barbecue, and then she's going to fresh press some fruit here and this thing is going to be absolutely delicious we bought this press a couple weeks ago and it was the best thing ever we have a local uh, brewery that fresh presses all their fruit for all their drinks and we realized it was too good Absolutely. shake weight is the flab busting breakthrough that trims your arms and shapes your shoulders at the same time mm. cheers Yep. So much better than the mix. Right, I'll be the judge of this. Absolute best margarita you can get if you just mix yourself. And this press was, how much was it, do you know? I think it was 70. Maybe $70 or so. We got the higher end one. We have some plastic ones or whatever, but we knew we were gonna use it quite a bit. So we wanted to have something more durable. And that one had the highest ratings. I think it had like 40,000 ratings. But yeah, drinking a fresh pressed margarita like this versus something you just buy um, with that syrup. Oh gosh, I can't even imagine drinking any of those anymore. So, hey Kim, yeah, that's quite the fire you got there. Yeah, that got a little intense. <laughs> I think it took my Ooh. leg hairs off. We are out by the campfire, enjoying what appears to be a lovely night, but there is an insane thunderstorm going on behind us. It's been going for about an hour now. It's just non-stop, the thunder, the lightning, uh, and it's just going like left to right. It's, Jason was recording, uh, did a time lapse for about 25 minutes and it's just, it's just non-stop. So quite the show tonight. Fortunately, it's way that direction um, and not over the top of us. They found tools here, so they know this was an actual camp. Oh, for real? Yeah. Oh. So long ago, Aboriginal hunters camped in rock shelters where they made and repaired tools on seasonal hunting trips. This hunting camp was used as early as 7,000 years ago, and more recently, 200 years ago. A cache of tools was found hidden here. A bark line storage pit traced to a more recent period of time was also uncovered. This helps archeologists archeolo place dates on man's earliest known activities. Dang, 7,000 years ago? Oh, go get inside that man cave. Yeah, go get in there and take a nap. I guess you'd have to be really short. Oh, this is weird. 
Yeah. Give me the light. <laughs> what is that? Look at, look at, look at oh, whoa. Whoa, that's cool. Dude, that thing is awesome. It's got orange. Dang, man, I wish I'd have brought my good lens. Yeah, so we're on this hike. Came across this marsh. And you can hear out here, this is pretty awesome. They just got so many birds and frogs. This is nature for you. All right, unfortunately today is checkout day. Didn't we tell you at the very beginning that we were gonna have all kinds of adventures for you? <laughs> this would have went any longer, it would have been a motion lake picture. Uh, but anyway, uh, the cool thing is checkout's not till one o'clock, so it still leaves us a little bit of time to actually go for another hike. And again, this campsite is so close to everything that we can get to uh, one of their highly rated trail systems uh, within a five to 10 minute drive. It's Riley Ranch Nature Preserve, and they've got miles of hiking throughout there. Uh, so instead of driving for a few hours without any moving, we figured we would uh, get up get started on loading up the trailer and then come check out this preserve and um, get ready to head out. So literally 10 seconds into our walk, we already see a deer. So that's it, another adventure come and gone. We told you at the beginning that we were gonna take you on some adventures and we definitely did that. Can't believe how much we did actually. Um, we're gonna have to try to cut maybe a couple videos, maybe when it's all said and done because we did so much. Otherwise it's gonna be a uh, feature length film. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. Definitely a um, awesome area to come camp, especially if you're looking to uh, explore Central Oregon. And all that has to offer, this is just right, centrally located to everything. So definitely give it a look if you're coming to this area, but just know that you need to book far in advance because it books up quick. See you next time. Safe travels.